Executives at the Boy Scouts of America have delayed a vote on whether to end the Boy Scouts' ban on gays. Deliberations on the issue were so emotional, one participant cried, so divisive that they threatened to split the organization. For an inside view on the battle over scouting's future, we're joined by Wall Street Journal's Anna Campoy and Zach Walls, an Eagle Scout and, and the founder of Scouts for Equality. Anna, I want to start with you. So a planned vote was pushed back till May. How come? Well, the Boy Scouts had planned to vote on this um, this week. It was on the agenda, but um, they heard from so many people for and against the issue that they decided that they had to do more research on it and talk to more people before they make any decision. Okay, I want to bring in Zach Wallace. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. Now, what we have some poll results, by the way. Uh, the, uh, a Quinnipiac University poll uh, asked. Uh, the public, do you favor lifting the ban? Mm -hmm. And 55% said yes. Right, and it wasn't just you know this 55% number that we're most excited about. If you look at the cross tabs and you really get down into the data, you also saw that 63% of white Catholics were on board, 60% of people under the age of 44, and 62% of people under the age of 30. So what this clearly tells us is, like speaking as an Eagle Scout and somebody who grew up in the program, the question that we really have to be asking today is do we want to have an institution that reflects the values of an America from the last century, or an institution that reflects the values of the America that these young men in 15, 20 years are going to grow up to lead. Mm -hmm. Now, we should say you're not gay, but Correct. Wh where does your passion for this particular issue come from? Well, I joined the Cub Scouts when I was six years old, like a lot of kids do, to experience the great outdoors. Now, my moms, Jackie and Terry, happen to be gay women, uh, but because a lot of folks in Iowa were willing to turn a blind eye, uh, they were part of my scouting experience. Mm -hmm. Jackie, my short mom, was actually a den mother, <laughs> a, uh, a mama grizzly, if you will. You know, and I saw firsthand that there was really no conflict at all between, you know, uh, embracing LGBT equality and, and the traditional values of the boy scouts so uh, l l l what is I mean this may be a fairly basic question mm -hmm. but but what is the roadblock on the other side you know I think for most people who are opposed to this policy it's not about the Boy Scouts at all uh, I was on news hour last night talking with Richard Land of the Southern Baptist Convention and, and he you know was trying to make this about some conversation about scouting values but as somebody who actually knows the scout law he's got his trustworthy loyal helpful friendly courteous kind obedient cheerful thrifty brave clean and reverent well done thank you <laughs> um, you know I, I see no uh, conflict there between what I learned as a scout uh, and what you know our unit experienced as they you know let my parents be a part of the program. Mm -hmm. Anna, I want to come back to you. Re speaking of uh, religious groups, mm -hmm. uh, they are some of the primary sponsors of scouting. I think we have a, I, I believe about seventy. Well, seventy percent are faith-based groups that sponsor scouting, and a significant portion of those, I want to guess, probably forty to fifty percent are Protestant organizations. Mm -hmm. Now. What, where do the various religious groups fall on this issue, Anna? Um, well, uh, a lot of the religious groups have come out and said that they won't be making um, any statements about where they stand on the issue until they have had a chance to examine all the implications of um, of, a, of a proposal that the vote that the board was considering to leave it up to local groups to decide on their membership policy. Um, I spoke with the uh, members of the Convention of Southern Baptists. They are definitely against lifting the ban. Um, the, uh, I spoke with someone from the Mormon Church. They said that they want to wait. So it really depends. Um, they're, they're not all, they don't all have the same opinion on this. Okay, Anna, thanks so much for joining us. Zach, I want to come back to you. Mm -hmm. uh, what's interesting, uh, th this has really kind of come to a head in the past six mm -hmm. months, and it appears that one reason is corporate pressure, corporate right. sponsors. Right. Uh, we founded Scouts for Equality uh, in June of last year. A month later, the BSA doubled down, said we are absolutely not going to be lifting the ban. And, and it was definitely a setback, but you know, Scout is cheerful. Uh, so we carried on. Uh, we started looking at the BSA's corporate donors, including Intel, UPS, Merck, Verizon, uh, Intel and UPS have both withdrawn their funding from the Boy Scouts until uh, you know they decide that they want to end the ban, which actually brings uh, them in line with their own corporate giving policies. Most companies in the Fortune 500 won't give to an organization that discriminates against people who are openly gay, including Intel and UPS. And so, really, this wasn't about you know attacking or, or targeting the Boy Scouts in any way, but making sure that their corporate donors understood fully that the Boy Scouts were engaging in this activity. Uh, currently, we have 
have a petition pending against Verizon. Uh, you can find that online at change.org slash Verizon funding. Uh, okay. And we're hoping that with the BSAs now punting the ball on this, uh, that Verizon will be willing to pull their support until the vote in May.